Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. I am Bronte Swanstead Hendrickson. The Nevis Health Promotion Unit is set to host the first ever Republic Bank into High School Health Quiz on Friday, May 19th, 2023. The quiz will take place at NIPAC at 6 p.m. The schools competing in the quiz will be the Nevis International Secondary School, the Charleston Secondary School, and the Gingerland Secondary School. Each, each school will be represented by four of its students. The topics they will be quizzed on will be non-communicable diseases, or NCDs, health, general health questions, as well as sexual health. The students are excited, they are ready, they have already had their education sessions, and it's going to be an exciting quiz. It is free of cost to the general public, and we're encouraging persons to come out, support the students, and support, support the schools. Senior Health Educator in the Nevis Health Promotion Unit, Shevany Nisbet. The Nevis Island Administration's Ministry of Health has launched a project to support the learning and development of young children while they access the services at the island's health centers. Welcome to this, our launch of the pilot project, Health Center Spaces Conducive to the Advancement of Physical, Social and Cognitive Development. Irene Hanley is the health planner in the Ministry of Health. Public health centers provide primary health care services to all demographics in the population. Included in these services are infant and toddler clinics. At present, over 500 infants and toddlers between the ages of birth and five years access these health centers on a monthly or quarterly basis. The length of time that these children spend at infant and toddler clinics can range from 20 minutes to 60 minutes and sometimes more, part of which is spent with a nursing professional. The additional time is spent in the waiting area where children usually just sit or wander around, which doesn't allow for full engagement in active learning. The goals of this project are to maximize the opportunity presented during infant and toddler clinics to teach parents about developmental milestones and to actively engage children while they wait to foster healthy development. This project is being piloted here at the Brown Hill Health Center and at the Combermere Health Center. The project is being implemented in collaboration with partners, including United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF. We are honored that is UNICEF to support the vision of the Ministry of Health, Gender Affairs and Social Empowerment to undertake an integrated approach to early childhood development by enhancing the health clinic experience for children and their families through the inclusion of activity spaces for structured play, etc. UNICEF has contributed, as you've heard, to establishing these activity spaces and we've also assisted in the virtual training sessions on child development delivered by the team from the International Child Resource Institute. We wish all children and families who come to the Brownhill Health Center happy and playful moments as you engage in these health center spaces. Wendy Elliott Williams, Program Coordinator for UNICEF in St. Kitts and Nevis. Minister of Health, the Honorable Janelle Nisbet, officially launched the project on Monday, May 15th. This project is being implemented in collaboration with UNICEF, Ministry of Education, Social Services, International Child Resource Institute, and other partners. And I know that our health planner, Ms. Irene Hanley, has been passionately working hard towards this for some time. So I am fully committed to championing this project as well. We begin with two centers, the others sure to follow, but the aim is to push the project island-wide. I also want to take the opportunity to encourage parents, guardians, teachers as well, to engage with their children in these activity zones as this too supports their engagement and cognitive development. When it comes to our children, it should always be all hands on deck. The Ministry of Health, Gender Fears and Social Empowerment is here to play its role and we encourage everyone to do the same. It is my esteemed honor to be able to declare this, the health center spaces conducive to the advancement of physical, social and cognitive development project 
officially launched. Phase one of the Health Center Spaces project also includes the training of healthcare workers, education officers, and social workers, the procurement of electronic equipment to support training and information sharing, the development of a training of trainers' manual, and parent and child engagement in the activity zones. Phase two of the project includes the establishment of a sensory garden with activity zones for outdoor play and learning at One Health Center, as well as parent and child engagement in the activity zones. A courtesy call was paid on Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, Eastern Caribbean States Representative Greg Rollins, and the local representative Sharon Jones on Monday, May 15, 2023, at his office. Immediately following the meeting, Minister Evelyn spoke of what was discussed and expressed gratitude to the delegation for their continued support support. Of course, we would have discussed quite a bit and uh, Mr. Rollins would have focused on what they are doing in AICA in terms of their short-term and medium-term plan and what assistance how we here in St. Kitts and Nevis can benefit. Of course, I would have focused on what we are doing, uh, some of our priority areas here on the island. I would have spoken extensively on, on the poultry industry, the broiler industry, which we are trying to jumpstart very shortly. And the assistance that we can get from AICA and the assistance we are seeking from AICA and the assistance that they can commit to. I would have also spoken about our value-added products, what we do at the Abbot or what we do at the Agro processing center, how those products have taken off, how those products are in all of our supermarkets, how all of those products are in our hotels, and what more we can do and any support that we can get from AICA. Rollins then delivered brief remarks and commended the Ministry of Agriculture for the work they've been doing. So it's been a very positive discussion and I believe that it serves as a basis for us to be able to fine-tune our activities here in Nevis. Uh, with a view to ensuring that we can make a contribution, a tangible contribution to the development of the sector here. And I want to just take this opportunity to again commend the Ministry and the Department of Agriculture here in Nevis for the excellent work that they've been doing. Uh, I've been very impressed with what I've seen and I just want to say to them to continue the great work and that ECO stands with you and we stand here available to support your efforts. Also present during the meeting was Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Huey Sargent. Still to come, Nevlek represented at Caribbean Renewable Energy Forum. The details after this break. One of the few places that has an untouched beauty that has captivated the hearts of many. Nevis is everything you imagine. Welcome back. Project engineer Ronel Pemberton and information technology IT manager Trevor Hendrickson represented the Nevis Electricity Company Limited Nevlek at the 15th Annual Caribbean Renewable Energy Forum, CREF. The forum was held at the J.W. Marriott Marquis in Miami, Florida, from April 26th to 28th, when more than 450 policymakers, developers, financiers, utilities, and investors from across the region gathered to discuss renewable energy. The main objective was to seek ways to translate renewable energy from discussions and ideas to progress and projects. Clean energy tops the list on the regional agenda as it offers sustainability, reliability, and promotes energy independence. Hendrickson and Pemberton had the opportunity to learn from and network with public and private sector leaders from 25 countries who are working to advance the clean energy transition in the region. They were especially impressed by the sessions on hydrogen, resilience, and country spotlights. 
The Caribbean Renewable Energy Forum is valuable for sharing best practices, insights, and opportunities in the Caribbean energy market. Nevlek thanks the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, and the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, for making the company's participation possible. Seven secondary school students will compete in the 2023 The Bank of Nevis Limited Tourism Youth Congress. The event will take place at 10 a.m. on Thursday, May 18th at the Nevis Performing Arts Center. This year's participants are Rusha Sharma and Ariana Powell of the Charlestown Secondary School, Anthony Movin, Kimia Bailey and Shamar Otley of the Gingerland Secondary School, and Kamisia Brown and Zion Harding of the Nevis International Secondary School. The aim of the competition, which will take the form of a round table discussion, is to stimulate greater awareness and excitement about tourism among young people. Each participant will be required to make a three-minute presentation on one of three topics, wellness tourism beyond the norm, accessibility tourism, or building a resilient and sustainable tourism workforce. Each participant will also be required to make a one-minute presentation on a mystery topic. The winner of the 2023 Tourism Youth Congress will earn the opportunity to represent Nevis at the Regional Tourism Youth Congress organized by the Caribbean Tourism Organization in the Turks and Caicos Islands. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.